For over 160 years, a unique structure has stood at the entrance to Llewellyn Park, a residential community located in West Orange, New Jersey, which was established in the mid-1800s as a haven from the grime and pollution of the city. Now known as the Llewellyn Park Gatehouse, this building was designed in 1857 by A.J. Davis, one of the most prominent architects of the 19th century. It was formed of rustic materials, sourced from its surroundings, natural stone quarried from the land's hillsides, and hardwoods harvested from old growth forests. After many years serving as a gate lodge, both an entrance to the community and a home to gatekeepers and caretakers of the property, the historic fabric of the building has been meticulously restored according to rigorous preservation standards. Here's the story of how that was done. One of the most important factors of the gatehouse is its longevity, and it was at this point necessary to make sure that this structure lasted for many, many more generations. So when this project was conceived by the committee of managers, it was understood that this would be a large-scale project that would involve a lot of the elements that compose the gatehouse. And when all of these elements were taken into consideration, we realized that we needed to engage in a process that was complete. So it started with a conditions assessment, and that was done by Jablonski Building Conservation. And then we built a team. The leader of the team, I would say, on the part of Llewellyn Park was Ron Gross, who is a member of the Committee of Managers. And he assembled a kind of a dream team between Jablonski and Paragon and all of the supporters of Llewellyn Park. And so the building conservation experts worked with the construction company on a constant collaboration and a back and forth to try different ways and different methods of repairing and restoring elements of the building. And we had applied for a grant to help with the costs of the project. And that grant also required matching funds. And so the Llewellyn Park Preservation Foundation, another part of the team, together with a fundraising group here, went out and raised funds so that we could match the grant that we received. So all of these pieces were coming together over a two-year period. Um, the work that was produced is really a team effort that reflects many contributions from many people. Um, so I guess the hierarchy of preservation is, you know, first to retain as much as possible. And then when we do have to do repairs, um, again, we're cutting back as little of the historic fabric as possible. We're replacing them with materials that are compatible, that look the same, that, you know, function the same, that breathe the same, that move the same. And then, you know, kind of moving on down from there is, is full replacement, which we did have to do some full replacement of things like mortar uh, here. And again, that's making sure that we're replicating what was there historically. Look, every project is different. Some projects are, are fully laid out, souped to nuts from beginning to end. Other projects are a work in progress for the most part. This project tended to be one of those work in progress situations. But in the end, it's the teams that are in place. In a project like this, you have a company like Jablonski who was top notch and Mary's always had a great team. And then from the ownership, we had Ron and Rita who were, I mean, on top of this more than anybody like you can imagine. So the process continued to move in real time. So we could obviously move forward and, and begin to address whatever needs to take place. In this particular project, it kind of changed every day. <laughs> it kind of changed every day, but, but the changes didn't slow anybody down and ended up putting us into a great result. Um, the rafter tails, I think, were really one of the biggest challenges um, for us. Our recommended repairs changed over time as we learned more about them. We had originally called for a number of them to be replaced, 
because we did think that they were actual structural timber members that were supporting the roof. But once we realized that they're only really decorative and are just supporting that eave, that allowed us to really be able to retain more of the historic fabric because we didn't have to make sure that they were structural. We were able to just make small cosmetic repairs because you know the, the, the rafters are gorgeous and putting in new would never really look the same as the you know ones that are 160 years old that are up there now. You know, other other than that, all of the challenges I think were able to be met as we learned more information. There actually were some new things that I did learn about the gatehouse. You think that, you know, mortar is mortar. I knew it had to be somewhat special, but this was really special. Natural cement goes all the way back to the Egyptians and the pyramids. It's been in use for centuries, but it is very different than Portland cement, which really came about in the late 1800s. They move differently and require different methods of application, but they natural cement really kind of lost favor in the 1950s and 60s. Um, the Natural Cement Association kind of came about around 2005 and really started educating people again. And one of the things that they've really stressed and has been proven is that natural cement on top of Portland cement has a tendency to fail because they both have different rates of thermal expansion and contraction. They don't move the same way. You know, one of the challenges we have sometimes when working with a contractor, because they're used to new construction and they don't necessarily know that, you know, you can't put a really hard type S mortar in, uh, you know, soft masonry, because it will just, it'll just end in sadness. Um, and that was one of the things where it was really nice that we had Paragon, because Paragon was able to come in and apply it correctly and cure it correctly. So the restoration project was comprehensive. The scope of work included the woodwork, mortar, windows, roofing, caulking, painting, and gutters. And the gutters, interestingly, were made slightly larger, and that was to respond to climate change, to maintain the look that was there historically, but to be able to handle a little bit more of the stormwater runoff that uh, is a factor in these more intensive storms. I love Llewellyn Park. I love the entire, I mean, I love all the architecture here and the gatehouse is probably one of my favorite aspects just because it's so small, adorable and round and incredibly picturesque. You know, it's really your first introduction to Llewellyn Park, and so making sure that it's, you know, treated properly and restored properly was something that we were really focused on, um, and I'm just really glad at how the whole project turned out. What we're really trying to do in the end, strangely enough, as restoration contractors, is to make it look like we were never here. That's really the point of it. When we walk away from this job, you're supposed to look at that sill and look like it's been sitting here historically forever. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed seeing the care, expertise, and pride that enabled us to preserve our historic 1857 Llewellyn Park Gatehouse for generations to come. Thanks to all the residents of Llewellyn Park, past and present, who contributed to the Llewellyn Park Preservation Foundation's Gatehouse Restoration Fund. Funding has been made possible in part by the New Jersey Historic Trust, State of New Jersey.